bit again. Don't fish your trick bait out of the box. Stay tuned for the super advanced trick bait video. Started at 6:30. Yeah, I'm on. I guessed right. It was a drug bait bite. Guess we'll see what it got. I think it got big bass with the tournament. Shh! Don't tell nobody. Don't. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Damn. Big bass. This is easily a 20 right there. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Dang, y'all see this? I mean, this ain't official, but. 22. I'm shaking, dude. I'm shaking. I'm shaking. Florida strain. It's nice and cloudy out. Should be doing good today. Let me snap some pictures for you. Alright. She measures out exactly 22. We'll let her go. It's a giant. It's a giant. Tell me it's a giant. In the super advanced trick me video, there's all a bunch of goodies. A bunch <laughs> of goodies. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we'll be talking about the super advanced jerk bait video. We will teach you guys how to select a jerk bait of your choice, tune it with hook selection and suspending strip like these little guys or like these weights that are um, pretty much like a soldering it's just lead weights and like lead, lead weights wired and we'll, we'll teach you guys how to tune a jerk bait to a certain water temp or pre-tune it so when you guys get to the lake you guys could uh, then perfect it when you guys are on the lake we're going to mega bass today we're going to some sprawls we're going to some lucky craft these small guys 78 pointers. 78 pointers. We're going to do some dual realis. That's a special color too. That's a special new color. And this That's is a big guy. Uh, the 120 size. And we're going to tune some um, Lucky Strike. So we got a bunch up here. So we're going to tune for you guys. Alright. Mega Bass. Alright. Mega Bass says suspending on the on their casing or on their label. But uh, most of this um, mega bass they're tuned for 55 degree water temp so we got this thermometer like laser thermometer and we got some water that we chilled here right so this water is only 48 degrees all right so we're gonna take a stock mega bass and we're gonna throw it in there and see what it does it is this one all right so your mega bass at like 45 or 250, it does this. See that? It floats. Floats. It's not suspending. So this is a trick to uh, make these suspend. And pretty much this is the same guy, but we upgrade the hooks. These are size six gammas. Owners. I mean owners. These are size six owners. <laughs> And see what it does. Look at that. And it sinks. Alright. So what do you do? So what do you do? That is the question. You always gotta ask yourself the question. 90 with size 4. Oh, that is perfect. Super slow sink. Of course, that's good. that guy's gonna hit like 12 feet depths, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We got this trusty tongue here to get it back out. Yeah, and we tune it. We tune our dirt baits every year before we go back. We just had two winter blasts, so that means it's time to tune some dirt baits. We spend like a couple hours doing this too, by the way. It's not that. It's not like it's gonna work. Okay, all stock, fast sink. See that? It's too heavy. That's stock hardware too. 
So how would you fix that, man? How would you fix that? You gotta you take like, some weight off. How do you take weight off of a stock lure? You gotta downsize your hook. But, but which one? You always, if you're gonna um, add weight, add to the front, all right? And then if you're gonna uh, take the weight off, you wanna take from the back first. You want the head to be heavy like this. Why? Uh, the natural, uh, when a fish die, it naturally has its head tilted down or up like this. But usually its head is heavy, so when it die, it tilts like this and it drops back down to the bottom. And so, also you get deeper depths with it too. Yeah, and then, then think about it, if, if you're pulling it like this, it goes up and then it reach, right it sells back up and then it will tilt back again if it's the ass in is heavy. But if you have the nose heavy, then it will tilt like this. So when you pull on it, it will dig deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. So we'll switch one of these hooks out. And also those hook, those stock hooks are fairly thick hooks. So you could even keep the same size hooks, but go to a different brand and it might matter a lot. It'd be nice to have um, your ring, uh, pliers, split ring pliers, split ring pliers. So that's like a size, that was like a size four. four. Yeah, so we're gonna put the size six on. These are eight, six, these are four. Well, that's was a five. I think this six, one's a five. Eight, six, five, and fours, and two. And then there's a two. Yeah. The two is just there for show, so we get, you know, so you guys know. But, well, how let's about- Let's try, let's try that one. Just all right, that. so if you're just tuning at home, you could just hook the, hook the, the hook yeah. onto it like that. Don't even put it on the ring. Don't even put it on the ring. All right. And just put it in the water. And you just put it in the water. Oh. See how slow it, it sinks this time? It's slower. So that means you probably got to do two. So you're going to change two. So we uh, change out two hooks. and see what it does. You see that? Ooh. Oh. Now it's a slow floater. All right. We got to add weight. So we gotta add a little weight, you guys. A little bit of weight. So you could do suspense strips or you could do it my way. I like Connery to talk to you guys about suspense strip. I'll do it my way. Mm hmm So there's many ways to add weight. Yeah, there's many ways to add weight. So I bought these. I think these are decoy. But you can use lead you solder. You can use lead long. solder. It's pretty much the same thing. Just take a piece of it off. Like that, mm -hmm. right? And then you, what I do is I stick in the eye of the first hook, and then bend it. So it won't come out, and it won't drop. Like that, you can like see? It? Yeah, like a V or a U. Mm -hmm. okay, gotcha. And then after that, I usually take it and then just wrap it around that shank of that hook. Or the base of the hook. Oh yeah, see that? Got it. All right, so we we'll put our, hang our hook back up, and then we'll drop it in there. Remember, tuning for forty-five degree water. See that? That's too heavy. That's too heavy. Take see some it. off. So see how much weight that was? Barely any. Weight. Barely any weight. So we just gotta take a little bit. Unwind it a little bit. A little bit at a time. And pinch of it, pinch some of it off. Yeah. See like that? We just pinch a little off. Just a little bit. And then we put it back in there and see what it does. Oh, I think you're almost there. Almost there. Bring it up to like halfway and just hold it. the killer slow sink okay we're gonna try to get you this one to perfect suspend and then we'll then we'll get you guys the reason why slow sink is good too so when your bait is fully suspending it sits in the uh, sits in that water column in front of the fish's face and you could just twitch it and it will twitch left and right there's like a little bit yeah, the, uh, the perfect suspend is perfect for post frontal fish. Because they don't want to bite anything. They just want to just, you just want to keep the bait in their face forever and they'll eventually bite it. 
a, uh, a slow suspend is good for like when bats are aggressive. See that? We already uh, took most of it back off. Yeah. Then, let's try this. Oh. Okay, get close. the get the snips. It's close. Close. Here's the momentum of the lore is actually going down. Oh, I think we got him, bro. I no, it's still no, 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 it's no. really slow it's sink still now. Real slow sink now. Really slow sink. You gotta do that perfect suspend. I mean, it's there will close. be one. You see how long it's taking to tune one of these guys? Okay, so basically we want to get it pretty close, and then when we get into the water, you can uh, final tune it. But all right, I think it's still gonna sink. I think I need to take a little bit more. Hold it, hold it, just hold it right there. Okay. Oh, it is barely moving. Alright, let it off. So when, you bait, so when your bait is sinking like that, you just gotta think that your bait is sinking one inch per second. So if you're waiting on a two second pause, you're already two inches deeper. Right. So you gotta think about when you're throwing, you're making like a one minute cast out there, your bait's gonna touch like 10 feet. Mm -hmm. So, but if you have a perfect suspender, it'll stay at that water depth, maybe like it only. Like like a mega bass, it says three meters where we're. No, it's three feet. Three, three to five feet. Three to five feet. Yeah. Not three. Three I'm meters, like twelve feet. Yeah. That's like a plus. Plus two. Plus two. Yeah. At the end, I can't even get any more. Might just take a split ring off. Right. Well, you almost there. The first one that went to the bottom. All right. A little more. Close to. Ooh. Ooh, that is barely sinking. Hot damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you guys gotta polish the paint off of that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and paint plays a role too, so if your bait yes. is transparent, um, when your bait is transparent, it means you have less color on your bait, and with less color, with less color on your bait means there's less weight. So even the paint paint job could matter. Yeah. Too much clear coat matters. All right, so we're we're pretty much down to a little ring of lead now. See yeah, that? Lead. So small. So small. Yeah. And oh oh, it stopped. Oh, it stopped. Here, we pull it back up. I don't think it hit the bottom. Oh. See how now it wants to float? No. It, no, it's like a perfect suspender now. Yeah. See? Slow? Super slow. It needs to so slow to fall. It's still into the bottom. Yeah. All right. One more tweak. I mean, this is what you'll do on the water, okay? Like, once you get to this stage, this is good enough already. Put in your tackle box. And when you get to the water, you will do this last step. Because based on water temperature and a bunch of other stupid variables that you can't control, you'll have to tune it that day. This last step is dependent on the day you're fishing. And you will tune it so it does not move. Oh, we got it, yo! See, it's not rising. It's not rising or falling. We'll Wait, oh shit, it. hold on. It moved up a little bit. We'll push it down a little bit. That's a perfect suspender. Dude, it ain't gonna get much better than that. I mean, it don't get much better than that. That's a perfect suspender. Yeah. Whew. This is internal tip. Okay, so in order to get the water tent, the room is about 75. The more tuning for 45 degree water, so we gotta keep that adding the ice to it just to keep the water level and the water pretty cold. Checking with the thermometer and everything. Some of the things you need is a uh, split ring plier, you need a thermometer, it could be a digital one like this one, or just a regular like turkey, like baking thermometer, or fish tank thermometer. Um, different size hooks, we got eight. 
the two fives are in there. <laughs> I mean, the two six are in there. Five, four, and then a two aught. I mean, if you could do like big jerk base, you probably need more weight. Uh, you need suspending strip. These are some old suspending strip. Some lead wire, like soldering lead, uh, or suspending dots. Uh, you can even put more split rings for weight. Some people would even do that. Just add another split ring, and you get more weight just for a split ring. I mean, it's to the point that you need. Okay. Even that. And then, of course, your tank. Not really a tank, but a long, a long, as long as you got a container that holds water, and you could chill it down to a certain tank. Um, fifty is really good. Any more than that is just kind of you know super like winter cold jerkbait fishing. I mean, we fish in forty-two degree water before, really mm -hmm. slow, but you will still get jerkbaited by it. But the, I think the best water temp is right about fifty. Mm -hmm. The best suspending jerkbait. Bite. Ice back out because Whoa, you're 47. <laughs> it's really chilled now. It's really it's condensating like your oh, cooking hey. cooler. Dude. <laughs> That's the 21 and a half. The ice out. Out. <laughs> and I caught it trying to catch a hybrid. Yeah, this is this is jerk bait Josh, fishing. Dude, I know a, Britt Wilson wants to do this. Like, about the way two oh, two years yeah, ago. This sucker is still suspended. Oh my gosh. That is the perfect suspender. That's right. I know you can't see it. It's all fogged up. I got some tissue. It's all fogged up because it's cold. It's 25 degree wa uh, water in 70 degree uh, room. So see how long that one's suspended? That's what you want. If you can take it beyond that where it just stays in the water column forever, it doesn't even move, it's even better. You know? We're at 46 right now. So 45, 46. 46. Yeah, that's your target water. So, before Connery come and um, finish it up, um, make sure you guys to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that notification bell button. And down below we got new t-shirts in our Teespring. So check those out. And we also have mugs too with the striper and our logo. Uh, check that out. Hua did a really good demonstration how to how to add weight uh, to your lures by using hooks and a wire wrap system. And don't get me wrong, that what we did was a very small wrap. It's, we've, we've done it where uh, specifically other brands, things like that, where you have to wrap all three hooks and multiple layers on that hook shank too. But the one that we had, uh, it, we just happened to have one that only took a little bit and it was good. So besides besides wrapping the shank with uh, you know a wire, like a wire, right? This is kind of old school, you know. If you ask the you, uh, the old school guys, the new school kids, you know, the new city slickers like me and, and Hua, we tend to use you know these uh, suspend strips and they have suspend dots as well. But for me, uh, I like the strips better, and I'm not gonna tune the lure for it. I'm just gonna show you how I do it. One, you can just stick it on the belly hook, you know, just like that. You probably just stick it on the belly like that. And that's actually a lot. That's actually too much, right? Uh, and I'll demo it quickly. Boy, what I mean by too much. Because if you just drop this in, it's it's going to it's gonna sink real fast. See that? It sinks really, really fast. And what I do is I'll keep it like that in the toolbox or tackle box. Once I get it out there, I'll take my knife and I'll just cut a little piece off. You know, run it right over and just cut it off. Show you guys how I do that right now. So what I do, take my knife and I cut like a quarter of it off. And I try to cut from the back to the front because I want the front to uh, suspend. So just go like that. It's not gonna hurt it. Actually, you want to take a little bit off at a time, so just want to quarter that again, and then you want to peel that quarter off. All right? Use your knife. I mean, you test it again on the water. So put it back in there. See how it's already a little bit slower. All right. So what you're gonna do is gonna take all of it off. Take a half of it off. Mm, 
Still too much. All right, but maybe for this one I have to take all of it off. But you guys get the you guys get the idea of how to tune this. All right, so let's just leave a little bit on there. Take majority of it off. And believe it or not, this is what wins tournaments. Uh, when we first started wintertime drink baits, uh, we, we won a lot of wintertime tournaments doing this. See how much slower that falls? See, that's a that's a fast fall for me. So that's what I like. Majority of the time, fast fall. Yeah, but, buddy. That's what I'm looking for right there. 20, One more thing is, I just want to show you guys that if you take all the weight off, and yeah, buy our, buddy, but you know, and this is, nah. I like the Spro brand a lot because the Spro brand man. comes with really good hooks already. Looking for? Gamagatsu number That's five. We're looking for right and a lot there. of times the Spro big brand ones, is already pretty good suspended right on the box. Females. These are owners, so they'll That's behave a little bit for. different. Let's we'll see how it's much slower with no weight on it. But that's All what, right. like I said, these Beautiful. are owner number sixes Beautiful. or owner number fives. So if I was going to do this again, there I'd probably is. just change the back oh. to number six. Oh, there we go. It'd be done. And the other way is instead of putting it on the on the bottom of the, uh, the lure, because if your lure is wet, the sticker won't stick. So what I do then is I take a hook. I'll show you on the big guy here again. And I just wrap it. I go to the bottom. I go to the hook shank with this, and I just do this, and I just wrap it. I wrap the shank. It's basically like the wire wrap idea, but this way you wrap a lot of weight a lot faster. And a lot of people will say, well, wouldn't that like kind of mess up the hook gap? And I say, well, yeah, of course it does. But I don't think it really matters. Basically, it'll look like that when you're done. See that? Right here, front hook. Uh, what that does is there's a couple of things that, that, that actually I think, I think, it's just a personal thing, is I think when you put the weight on the hook versus putting the weight on the belly, after you jerk it, I think if the weight's on the hook, the hook will pull it. I think the, the lure will shimmy a little bit as it's falling or suspending, whereas if you put on the uh, belly weight, it'll just, you know, it's basically after the twitch, it just sits. It doesn't do anything. So that's one thing that I like to do. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, feathers. Forgot that we, we we're not gonna demo feathers tonight, but if you can tie a little feather, just a little feather like that. There are some days where the feather matters, and in terms of feather colors, it's gonna be brown or white. Some days like. they only want the bottom two. Yeah. So like, some days it's like weird. Like this guy. Is oh really yeah. A like so I choose bottom yeah let's talk colors let's talk colors so since you mentioned that uh, color so colors for me uh, from dark to like an hour after you see some light I throw a bone color some type of a bone color either all bro all bone that's called cellmate it's from Spro or sexy sexy doll sexy said that's from Mega Bass and um, no, this is also a, a killer color for me. I always throw this from during tournaments. This is called the Walking React color. It's from Mega Bass. Only Mega Bass paints it this color. And then uh, once the sun comes up, and well, if the sun comes up, and you've only got like two feet of visibility, three feet of visibility, visibility, I still will stick to this color, or even kind of this color, for the rest of the day. But if the sun comes up and you have you've got like say four feet of visibility or more, then I like to throw transparent colors. Like where's the uh, where's the big one? Yeah, right. Here. Transparent colors. You can see right through it. Like you can see right through it, right? Transparent colors. The ghost colors. Ghost minnow. This one's pretty deadly too. The 70, 78 Lucky Craft pointer. That's pretty, it's pretty legit. And then, uh, Stacy 90, small profile, but dives a lot deeper. I think it hits like 10 feet. The way you tune them, if you, especially if you tune them for a sinking, uh, a fast sink tube, it'll go even deeper than that. We'll talk about it in a bit. And this is a one that we've used for a little bit. It's just a basic uh, Mega Bass copycat. It's probably the best one out there. Uh, it's from Lucky Strike. It's the Rick Clun, the RC Stick. 
And here's a tip for you. If your bait doesn't come with a big dot right there, sharpen the big dot. It just helps the fish attack it better, okay? That's one good tip too. And of course, sometimes they just want chrome. You have to play with that. The chrome and the, the, the transparent colors, it really depends on the day. Uh, what I've seen is if it's cloudy day, they kind of want a chrome, a little bit of cloudy, windy chrome. But if it's like dead calm, post frontal, I mean, this is hard to beat. Right there. All clear with a little bit of chrome. This is something that only Mega Bass does, by the way. That's why we keep buying these lures. It's clear, see through, but you still got a chrome foil on the bottom. So just a little bit of flash, but primarily it's see through. So that is that. And as far as depths go, um, wintertime jerk bait is really, really weird. You have to find out where they're at. Sometimes they're on the shallow, sometimes they're on a break, and sometimes they're in like 15 feet of water. And you don't want to, and there is a time for the jerk baits too. It's not like it's going to work all the time. And then the best thing about the jerk baits is it calls fish to you, to the lure. So you want to, you want to present the lure as if it's not a natural like minnow that's lost. You want to present it in your mind so it's a minnow that's dying. It's dying from the cold front, you know, so that, that's where you want to be. So you, you, there's not a lot of hard hitting jerks or anything like that. You pick the Okay, so you, in terms of depths for your jerk baits, you want to pick a depth that is about three feet above where you're fishing. So if you're fishing uh, six to seven feet deep, you want to pick one that only dies three feet. If you're fishing at 10 to 15, you pick one that's hit nine, 10, right around that area. And you what you want to do is you want the lure to suspend in the water column. What am I doing with my hands? I got lures in front of me. Mm -hmm. Let's pick this one. So you want the lure to suspend in the water column, and you want the fish to look up, and it, you want it to just nose up and grab it. That's all you want to do. This lure is not designed to touch anything. It's bad at, at touching rocks, it's bad at touching wood, it's bad at touching grass. Look at this little bill. It's not going to protect you from anything. So this is a true open water technique. You want the fish to come get it. It's not going to go to the fish, okay? And that's why clear water is so important. And that's the power of drink baits. And in the winter time, if you're looking at this, and imagine this is your drink bait. And it just slow sinks like that. That's what you want because you're trying to uh, imitate a dying bait fish. You know, a real bait fish will, you know, swim like this. And then darts off like that. But bait fish don't do the whole nose down thing. And they don't they don't do this. Fish do this. I've seen fish do this. They don't do this. So that's that so that to to a predator fish, whether it's bass, stripers, waz, that's an easy meal. So they'll come in, they'll just they'll just get it. And the bite the bite is never really like ferocious. A lot of the bites, when you throw it out there and you got your dirt going, when you check, it's just simply like you're hung up on seaweed and you got them. Oh, that's so perfect. That slow sink. So deadly. That's so deadly, dude. That slow sink. Oh my gosh. Mm, that's so crazy right there. Like imagine 10 foot zone too. Mm. Oh, no, actually, that's, uh, that's not. Let me take, let me take the off. Let me take the split ring off. Because it was, but now it's like, you know, acclimated, like you said. Yeah, when you um leave your jerk bait, I mean, when your jerk bait's in your box, it's probably like 65 degrees. So once you throw your jerk bait in the water for couple like times. maybe, yeah, Two a couple casts, shoes, you know. And then the jerk bait temperature will acclimate to the water. And when it does that, it That's also super changes. super advanced. Yeah, that also <laughs> changes the buoyancy of your bait. Because look at it. Now the bait outside the water is getting some hue on it by itself. So it's colder than the air. Okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, now it's floating. See? I just took all I did was take the slit ring off. Now it's... Yep, no, it's floating. All right, so there's a there's a time and a place for all these suspendings. So.
So you want a slow suspender if you're fishing real shallow rock. Because you know sometimes sometimes in the middle of winter, bass would actually suspend in two, three, four foot of water, like big ones too. And that's when you you need a slow like slow riser. Because you don't want to get hung up in the rocks, right? It's only two feet of water. And you might have bombed the cast <coughs> way out. Oh, me, right? So you could have bombed the cast way out. And you want a slow riser, you don't want to get stuck in rocks. Uh, but majority of the times, uh, hybrid killer and I, we fish, we fish suspending or slow sink lures. But look at that. It's got a little bit of weight on there already. We'll add a little bit more. So before I had one, now I've added another strip. And it was rising. And guess what? Now it's falling. See that? That's how sensitive Drake bait fishing is. So I'm going to trim a little bit off with my north and we're going to get into perfect suspend okay and this is the level of precision you got to go to this is the difference between getting a bite and not oh oh that slows the slower no it's suspending now mm. see that see that and it's like slow sink now mm. but that's as good as you gonna get it boys that's as, because you figure if you still have your line tight on it it's not gonna sink it's, yeah. this is free fall right now yeah. it'll just slide even it'll fall even slower than that and talk a little bit about line oh line damn okay so line line is very very important because i think you gotta fish small lines uh i think the biggest line you could throw is probably 12 pound and that's only if you're around a lot of cover. Uh, everything else should be 10 or 8. Uh, if you're on a bay caster like I am, uh, I throw it on 10, 90% of the time. If you're on a spinning setup, I really I really even think 8 pound test. A braid to fluorocarbon, 8 pound test, especially these little guys. Mm, it's, the, it's the deal. I, uh, I throw, um, I throw on a spinning rod, because yeah. I like for other casters. Right. But I throw it on a braid to liter, a 10 pound braid to a 12 pound liter, a fluorocarbon liter, and it works pretty much the same. Okay, so I'm gonna trim this off again. And fine tune it some more. Fine tune it some more, just for, just for the folks on YouTube. So, hey, give me a thumbs up, right? Give me a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel too. Well, can you keep our boys can't even see, huh? Oh, it's rising. Maybe if I poke it. Oh, dude, that is like. No, it's a super slow rise. It's a super slow riser now. Yeah. Say so. You want to poke it when when you poke it and then it goes down and it kind of just stays. See there. now, see that? That's like almost perfect right there. Like you're not gonna get it much better than that because the water temp is changing and everything too. Because it's been here for a while, but dude, look at that. That is. That's your five second pause, you know, like snap, snap. Wait, 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 snap, snap, you know? And you guys gotta remember that in the morning, your water temp is a lot colder than midday. If you have a sunny day, your water temp could change five degrees. So see, now, see, it suspends on the bottom because the bottom water is colder than the top water. See how it's a perfect suspender now? <laughs> Isn't it crazy? That's how critical Drake Bay 2 needy is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, surface temp is different from the yeah, bottom see, temp. See, watch, it's coming to the top, and now it's going to just keep on rising faster and faster. But that's crazy, though. See, that's the difference between getting bit and not getting bit. You got to play with all this stuff. But for the majority of the time, you want it slow sinking. I'm just going to say that now. A lot of people on the internet will never tell you that. But in the wintertime jerkbait fishing world, you always want, number one, I would say 80% of the cases, you want that super slow sink I'm talking like an inch every two to three seconds that's super slow sometimes we want a fast sink fast sink I would say is about six inches every three what, seconds, three seconds mm -hmm. roughly and then if you I don't know if you did the math right on that but if the post frontal days clear bluebird skies with no wind you want it perfect like can't even stress you that cannot stress that enough they want it perfect suspending and if they're in the shallows, they're fairly aggressive. You need one a slow riser. 
That's that's what you want. Thermal fluorocarbon for the most part. Yes, fluorocarbon is going to sink. Uh, but if you're in the shallows, throw it on braid to a fluorocarbon leader. It's fine. And um, what is the other color? Oh, chartreuse bottoms for some reason. Some days. If you're playing with smallmouth, that's a big deal. I don't know why smallmouth like it. Uh, stripers, white. Just throw white for stripers. I don't know what it is. Stripers are pretty dumb. They don't get caught and released a lot, so they don't they don't build their knowledge base. Um, that's pretty much it. Make sure your hooks are straightened. But the other thing about wintertime fishing is when you get bit, like I said, you jerk, 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 or you just drag, snap. Those are mainly the two we throw. So for me, I like to snap, snap real quick, snap, snap, then reel, okay? So I'm not like reeling and snapping. It's like snap, 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 reel like half a turn, not even a full turn. Snap, snap again. Hybrid likes to throw a little bit different. He throws a spinning gear, so he throws it out there. He kind of drags it. And then he snaps at the end. And then he just holds it. And he watches in line and see if it jumps. For me, I don't really see it much because I'm not on break. He's on break. You can see the line jump. For me, I'm on floor carbon. So I go snap, snap, check. Snap, snap, check. See if, like, something's on it, on the check, right? So it's like snap, snap, check. If you feel tension, swing all the way. All the way, okay? That's how my drink bait is. More like a... Uh, yeah. Sweeping hook sets. Yeah, big sweeping hook sets, nothing like jig sets or nothing like that. And then, um, like I said, on 10 pound line, the hooks are real small. So we've caught like five, six pounders on these. And it's the wintertime fishing, uh, they don't hardly ever jump. You know, the, even the big fish in shallow water, they hardly ever jump. You just have to battle them, you gotta fight them. But like I said, they don't, they don't jump, they don't dig very often. Uh, they usually come to the boat pretty quick. I'm guessing around six. Awesome because the little six, six size six hooks, you never think a hold of a six pounder. But man, when you get them in the corner lips or anything around the, the soft tissue, the number six hooks from owner is probably the best ones you could put on a jerk bait. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, all the links are down below for all these jerk baits that we like. And all the hooks we recommend too. So we have a number eight, number six, number five, and number four from owner. And then we have like number five from Gamagatsu, and we also have a number, f I think number five EWG from, from a Gamagatsu as well. So depending on, like you have to have a lot of options when you're trying to balance these things out because every lure is going to balance slightly different. Even if it's the same brand, same color, still going to balance just a little bit different. So you have a lot of options. That's why you have like, f like uh, two types of suspense strips. Uh, you can play with uh, split rings and all that. Uh, so yeah, everything will be down in the links uh, be the, in the description um, to help you guys out and link you guys to all the, the drink baits we throw. So, you know, let us know what y'all think. Uh, let me know if I missed anything or let me know if you guys want to know other things about it. Because I'm sure there's other things I've already left out. So let me know in the comments and we'll see you on the next one. Latest. All right. Even the most expensive Mega Bass drug baits will not suspend perfectly. You still gotta tune them, okay? See? It's a slow riser. See that? Gotta add some weight to that one, boys. Gotta add some weight to that. That's a stock one out of the box, brand new. Okay? Probably gotta, you know, wrap the hook a little bit or change out all the hooks. I'll probably change all the hooks. I actually don't like these barbarian hooks too. So anyways, just want to say that every single drag bait needs to be tuned. I could buy drag bait right out of the box and I'm just like, oh, oh. if it's not tuned, oh, I wouldn't want to throw it. All right, guys. Hope you guys uh, learned a lot about drag bait fishing today. Uh, that's everything we know in our super advanced jerk bait fishing tips, whatever you want to call it, video because I'm sure... That's going to be a lot for you guys. So for every jerk bait you have, if it's a fast loader, it'll be really hard to get it to suspend. But if you buy a so-called suspending jerk bait, make sure you tune it for the water temperatures it's going to go into before you take it out there because I guarantee you it's going to it's going to it's going to put out. Jerk baits in cold water is like a kid in the coffee shop. Speaking of coffee shop, we got a new mug. Look at this. Striper on the front, our work in the back. 
So, before you guys go, uh, check the Teespring links right below the video and uh, pick one up. Help us out. And also, like and subscribe to the channel and, uh, you know, share this with your buddies. Because I'm pretty sure uh, not a lot of people know these uh, tips. They're pretty fairly advanced, but with, you know, one maybe afternoon tuning all your Drake baits, you will be pretty much set for the whole winter. All right, guys? Till next time, Connery from Out of Work. There you guys. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, but stop freeloading. We need you guys to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the bell. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you guys on the next one.